And perhaps you've noticed that uh, we've changed our mask policy. Did you notice this? <laughs> Great rejoicing in the land. So let me just uh, say a couple things. So uh, those of us who are downstairs, they already know this, but the downstairs area, the fellowship hall where we're um, streaming down there, is a completely masked um, experience for everyone participating down there. So if you are downstairs or if you're looking for a more masked environment, that is downstairs for you, and that will remain that way until we make a move from that. So this, this area is masks recommended but not required, okay? So you're free to wear them, you're free not to wear them, and uh, just be mindful of folks. And of course, if any of you are sick, we'll pray from you at home, okay? And so just, hey, you know, we're going to be at home. We love you, and we trust God's grace, and thank you for loving us as well. So we want to be together, but uh, if you're sick, say, hey, you know, it's better for me to watch online. That opportunity will be there uh, for each and every one of us, okay? So there you go. All right, we are jumping into the Word, and I am endeavoring to get done a little bit early today. I looked at my watch last week, and I'm like, I spoke over, a, a, over an hour, right? Now... <laughs> One of us is happy. So, <laughs> um, I would say, uh, being in Africa and India and different places, the first hour, if you don't give them like two or three hours, they're disappointed, all right? So that's just a warm-up there. So for us Americans, I don't know what our deal is, but, uh, you know, let's try to listen well and we'll try to look at what God would be speaking to us today. And I do pray for that, that I know my words are not very good, but I know God's word is faithful and true. So God speaks. Speak to us. Help us to hear. Help us to listen. And that is our heart for sure. Okay, so if you have a Bible, go ahead. We're going, of course, back to Proverbs. And we are going to cover a lot more territory today than we did in the last two previous messages. So we're going to jump into verse 8, and we're going to cover the whole rest of the chapter today. Okay, and I've distilled it down to two points today, and I want us to pay attention. I want us to listen what God's Word would be speaking to us this day. So, so far, we have looked at who is primarily writing to us. We know that this is Solomon, and this is a book of wisdom gathered for us so that we can experience God's wisdom. God's Word is given to us for our encouragement to give us hope so that we can persevere or endure. And I ask and I pray that God will give us his wisdom so that we can live life according to his way. It is wisdom that works, and God's wisdom indeed does work. And all of us, whether you are a young person or you are advanced in years, can grow in wisdom. And God gives us an invitation calling out to the simple, calling out to the young, calling out to the wise, calling out to the discerning to come and to listen and to learn. Because all of us have made choices that we now regret. We can say amen, right? There are things that I can um, uh, think upon and thinking, you know, I've gotten a PhD in making bad decisions sometime, okay? And so God help us to be attentive, to follow him so that we can do life along with the wisdom and the way of God. So God gives us a gracious invitation. He doesn't keep this wisdom to himself. He doesn't keep his knowledge to himself, but offers it to us through his word by his spirit. And that is part of God's graciousness and mercy to us. He doesn't just give it to a few folks in a, a certain area during a certain time frame. But God in his goodness wrote it down for us and pre um, preserved it so that we can have his word in our language. And it is a beautiful gift. And so many of us have his words with us. And so many of us have his word within us. And so many of us have his word at home and hopefully in our heart. And I wanted to say and encourage you that give yourself to the Word. Read it and allow it to read you, okay? God, will you speak to me by your Spirit? God, I give myself over to you. And God, help 
me to think according to your way. And God, help me to live according to your will. If we are people who do so, we will see God in new and spectacular ways. And we will have the power that is necessary to do his will. Do you know that God's will sometimes is difficult? You say amen, right? Hard to continue to love when you don't have any love anymore. Hard to be patient when they are stepping on your very last nerve, right? It's hard to say, God, I will take a risk of leaving something that is known, something that is comfortable, something that we have embraced and, and, and held onto when he says, let that go and come and follow me on the waves of something new that he would have. It requires courage for these things. And God's strength and God's ability and God's love in our heart to follow him. So today, wisdom calls out to us in two ways. In a form of parents talking to their son. And we'll see that. And the first point is this. Do not be baited by sinful influence. So we'll hear this wise couple telling us to be wary of being led astray. The second part, and this is the second point I'm giving them to you right up front, is that we have been given an invitation to listen to wisdom, or if you choose not to, we will suffer the consequences. So we have responsibility as God calls out to us, as God instructs us to either pay attention, give ourselves over to what he may be saying, or to say, well, I'll go my own way. You and I have a choice if we are going to give ourselves over to listening to him. So may God give us wisdom. May God give us ears to hear what he may be telling us. So here we go, Proverbs chapter 1, starting with verse A, and we are going to, excuse me, 8, and we're going to work our way to this passage. It starts this way, this passage starts this way. Listen, 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 give ear, my son, my daughter, to your father's instruction. And do not forsake your mother's teaching. They, this instruction, this wisdom, are a garland to grace your head like a crown or a chain or a necklace to adorn your neck. So opening up this passage is a promise and a request, requesting that we would listen to these godly parents who are giving us their instruction as a gift. We, in turn, have the choice to either cover our ears or to open them to say, God, what are you saying? If we listen, this instruction, this teaching will grace your head and be like a chain around your neck. If you give yourself to listening to God's wisdom, it will set you apart from other people. Have any of you watched, um, let's see, like the Oscars or the Grammys or anything that has a red carpet, right? And we watch the red carpet, and here are these celebrities or singers or whatever getting out of these massive vehicles in these very lovely, well, sometimes lovely garments, okay? The guys are all tucked up or whatever they're wearing. The ladies are wearing... Various things, and here they go. What differentiates one from another? Well, they all have a lot of money. They all have very nice garments. But sometimes there's something that makes them stand out, be it a headpiece, be it a necklace, right? Something that says, wow, who is this person? And what God is saying, it's like you are walking along life or along the, uh, the red carpet, And there's something different about you that makes you stand out. It's not your physical features. It's not your garment per se. But it is walking in God's wisdom that says there's something different about her. 
It's like walking in with a $3 million necklace around your neck. It says something about you. (laughs) Who is this person? It reminds me of Queen Esther. Are you familiar with the Old Testament passage, right? Esther, a orphaned girl who gave herself over to the wise counsel of Mordecai. Who, as when the king was looking for a new queen, gave herself over in humility to wisdom. What should I do? How should I conduct myself? God, will you work in this situation? She chose wisely and was set apart. So God gives us this invitation saying, listen to me, and if you do, as a stack of resumes, per se, are passed in front of the desk of a hiring measure, um, uh, excuse me, hiring um, manager, that they go through, 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 whoa, what is this? Who is this person? If you give yourself over to God's wisdom, you will stand apart. This is a person who has accomplished things. This is a person who is submissive and hardworking and bold in the right way. Follows through with their word. I want to talk to that person. So this is the invitation and instruction that God gives to each and every one of us. And it is by his grace. So this is the first thing that they tell us. The first point of up to um, verse 20. And this is it. Do not be baited by sinful influence. That's a summation of this. Okay. And I choose that word very, very specifically. Baited by sinful influence. Verse 10, my son, my daughter, if sinful men, sinful women entice you, do not give in to them. Entice you. Okay. Hebrew. Copper, it uh, covers this concept of being baited, right? Any of you gone fishing before? Fishing? I love to fish, right? Fishing is good, okay? A wise and good fisherman or fisherwoman knows where the fish are, number one. Knows what the fish like. And knows that if they can dangle in front of the, here, fishy, 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 fishy. And disguise their bait, right, in such a way that the fish will think it's free lunch time and grab the bait. But a little announced to the fish There is a barbed hook or hook somewhere in there that if they chop away, they're going to be hold away, right? We've talked about this once before. So in this world, not everybody wants the best for you, right? And as you read, as, as we read, we'll recognize there's a promise of goodness, but a hook of death. That's involved by this enticement, by this encouragement, by this influence of you. And influence comes more than just people we physically know. In our digital world, people make a living by being social influencers. Do you know this, right? Looks on their Instagram, bites on their YouTube video. Influencers. And they influence, believe me. And they have millions of eyeballs normalizing their behavior. Well, they're not selling anything. Oh, yes, they are. Right? It is a philosophy. It is come follow me because if you do, I will lead you to the promised land. Just trust me and look at how beautiful I am. How wonderful my life is. And we laugh, and we look, 
and we bite. My son, if sinful men or women entice you, do not give in to them. Verse 11, if they say, come along with us. Let's lie in wait for some innocent blood. This seems quite um, out on the surface. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let us swallow them alive like the grave and whole. Like those who go down to the pit. Now we will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast your lots with us. Join with us. For we will all share in the loot. So here's the enticement. That you, with them, will be able to enjoy the good life, valuable things, pleasures, freedoms, a rich reward. And all it will take is taking advantage of some poor suckers. Now, this happens all the time. Well, you know, if you just cut corners on your mm, taxes, if you just deceive your employer and you're saying that you're really doing one thing but you're doing another thing, it'll turn out better for you. If you look a certain way, if you flaunt certain things, if you just maybe kind of take advantage of some people, we're not going to say that because it will make us feel bad. If you just do a little, you'll gain a lot. And there's enticement to sin all the time. And so we break God's law when we choose to take advantage of anybody for our own interests. Right? Take advantage of them. Use them in one way or another way. And whole industries are, have, have risen up because of people taking advantage of others to get from them what they want. Anyone here heard of the gambling industry? Anybody? Anybody? Anyone here? Heard about how, trying to enslave children in other places so that they can make more money when they sell you their garments or their shoes. You can make a lot of money if you just invest in this company. No, don't mind that they're you know, employing hundreds of kids. We won't really talk about that, but look at all the money you can make. These enticements are here, and they're calling out to us, and some of them are on the surface, and some of them are underneath. Don't follow those people who influence you to take advantage of others for your own gain. I want you to think about that. Where in your life is this occurring? Verse 15, my son, my daughter, don't go along with them. Don't even set foot on their paths. For their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. So the instruction is, don't even step a foot in that Direction. Have you ever run uphill before? I have. It's hard. No one else is harder? Running downhill. Have you ever done that? Okay. Running uphill, at least you have some control over it, right? You're going, going, your legs are burning, but you can continue to go. Have you ever tried to run downhill? (laughs) One step. And you go, and all of a sudden, you're going, going, going. Gravity is not your friend at this point. The faster you go, the faster you go. (laughs) 
and off you go. Right? And that is so much how sin works, isn't it? You just take one step, and it doesn't seem too bad. Right? Maybe just a little thing. Put it in your pocket. Isn't this how this works? We know this, right? And then that kind of felt good, and hey, I kind of got away with that. And then, let's take another step. And then it's something more. And then all of a sudden, it's more and more and more, and you are running, 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 and you are destroying yourself. Sin and entrapment is always progressive. Always progressive. And this is what he's saying. Listen, if you take a step in that direction, often one step leads to another step. And then another step leads to another step. And another step leads to another step. And so you, you get going so strongly that you can't stop yourself. Right? Does anyone ever have a goal of saying, when I grow up, I want to be addicted to something? No one says that. Well, how does it happen then? One step at a time, baby. One step at a time. 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 And then you're running because you are hooked, friend. So let us think. These influencers, those around us, those we're listening to. And who are we listening to? There's a lot of voices proclaiming and calling out to you to follow them. Right? Books and seminars and videos and YouTube channels and internet sites and individuals that are calling to us all the time. Who are you giving yourself to? Who are you listening to? Who are you learning from? Everything preaches. Everything. Listen, pay attention. And then he goes on and says, avoid these people. Because it will not turn out well. He continues with verse 17 and 18. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. Now they trapped nets. The birds will see it and like, hmm, you have to disguise it. These people disguise what they're doing. But in truth, this is what's happening. These men, these women, <laughs> they lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. They're losing more than they're gaining. They're setting traps for others that ultimately they're going to fall into themselves. And we see this time and time and time and time again. In the name of freedom, they become slaves. Why is it in our country that most of our celebrities and people with positions of power and people with lots of money end up doing horrible things? Getting addicted to one form of drug or another, or being, going from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship. Why is it that so many of them are on all of this stuff just to get through the day? Violence begets violence. Greed creates more greed. Experiences want better and more experiences. And you keep climbing where you think is up, but it's actually down. God, is this what you want for this? God, this is, is this what is honoring you? They're not asking those questions. They're just trying to convince you that following them is the pathway to the good life. And God says, follow me. Follow my paths. It will lead you to the good places. But there's always people calling to us. Such are the paths, verse 19, of all who go after an interesting phrase, ill-gotten gain. 
It takes away the life of those who get it. Ill-gotten gained. All of us who choose to go down the path of getting something that we should not have will pay dearly for it. It will take away the life of those who get it. Those who go down these paths who think they're gaining more than they are losing, in fact, they lose much more than they are gaining. Ill-gotten gain. What is this? Dishonest gain. Valuable things obtained by theft, by deception, or other immoral actions Profited, profit gained wrongly. Something that you've gained through deception. I remember being in China. We were on a mission trip on our way to Mongolia. We had an opportunity to go by the Great Wall of China, which was spectacular. On the way away from the Great Wall of China, there's all a bunch of vendors, right? They're all trying to get people to buy things. They know that we are rich Americans. Right? They know we like to buy stuff and we are stupid, right? And they want to be right at the first booth because they know they want to get you when you still have loaded pockets. So they call out, and we were there, and I have a stamp to my own stupidity. Where I thought it was a good deal for 20 American dollars. <laughs> you know where the story's going. No, David, silly boy. Okay. Wow. You go down a booth, guess how much the same exact stamp is there? $15. You go down one more booth, guess how much it is there? Ten dollars. You keep going down with the actual retail price. It's about a buck. Yeah, yeah. Those of you who've traveled, yeah, pay attention. Right? Well, the first guy was just a good business man. Was he? His family probably thought he did, right? Because he made a lot of money, sucker. Dishonest gain. If you ever rip somebody off, <laughs> ill-gotten gain, money stuff you have but you shouldn't have because you just took advantage a little bit, something that you have in your life that you know you shouldn't have, gotten by deception. It comes in lots of forms, from quickly shutting the computer and turning the internet down, to hiding bottles that you shouldn't have in some garage toolbox, right? to having some money that you know you shouldn't have but you have, and kind of putting it aside. What's interesting about this ill-gotten gain is it takes the life. Now, this is not necessarily talking about physically killing you. However, it can physically kill you. This is talking about it captures your heart. It captures your heart and drains your life of what matters most. You are always looking to go spend time with it. Be it shopping, be it a site, be it something that you stashed away that you know you shouldn't have, but you want to have it. And you think it's just okay and it's just, justifies, but it's ill-gotten and you're trying to keep it away. And now all that you can think about while you're doing one thing is you can think about that. Right? I can't wait till she leaves till I can get to this. I can't wait till it goes over there so I can get to that. And you're thinking about it all the time. And it takes 
your heart. You're spending more time. You're spending more thought. You're thinking, well, it's all okay. And while you're giving yourself to this, you're not giving yourself to what you should, to your family often, to your workplace, to, to God and his service, because it has captured your heart. This happens all the time in the church. And these good parents know that what hap- captures your heart captures you. He says, don't go after this stuff. It looks in the sales pitch is that it's going to enhance your life, but in the end it takes your life. Takes you away from what is right and godly and traps you. And ultimately will destroy you. So God's wisdom says to us, hey, don't listen. Don't take a step in that way. They'll entice you and say how good it is and how great it is and how wonderful this all is. It's a lie. Do not be baited by sinful influence. I want you to do a gut check right now. Are you talking to me, preacher? (laughs) Is God talking to you? He wants things for you for your good. He offers you what is truly good. No hook in what God offers. He gives us an invitation to step away, to walk away, to not be pulled away. Second, this is our second point. Listen to wisdom or suffer the consequences. You have a choice. And so wisdom now herself speaks to us, offering an invitation to all in contrast to the sinners, right, who are looking to entice us, get us alone, bring us towards them one by one. Wisdom operates in a different way, where sinful enticement kind of happens in a back alleyway. Wisdom climbs up into the highest steeple on the edge of a wall and cries out in the public square. Let's listen to her. Verse 20. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech And the wisdom of God is available to all, calling to those who will listen, calling to us so that we will live. And we have a response. We have an opportunity. Would we turn in to the message of God? Are we going to turn up the message of other things? Because everything preaches. Everything draws. Everything calls to us. What's coming into our ear? Who are we listening to? And wisdom of God, wisdom itself calls to us, saying these things in verse 22. How long will you who are simple love your simple way? Strong emotions here. How long will you who are simple calling out to us love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery? How long will fools hate knowledge? These are strong words here. How long will you love, right? Strong emotion, simple ways. How long will you delight in mocking? How long will you Hate knowledge. So who is he talking about? Who are the simple? Who are these folks? These again are the gullible. These again are the naive. 
anyone weak-minded enough to fall for flattery. Don't you like that? And temptation. (laughs) Flattery. Not only are these people this way, but they love being this way. Why? Because it's easier. They don't want to do the hard work of thinking and taking responsibility for themselves. This way, if something goes wrong, they can blame others. Skirt responsibility. Sometimes we make choices because we don't want to do the hard work of thinking about our choice. It's easy, it's convenient, it's here. They must know what they're doing. And we jump on in and we hurt ourselves. So the call of God is, how long will you love this? To the mockers, mocking or scoffers. This describes the person who refuses to take the truth or the advice of wise counselors seriously. I know what I'm doing. Mockers love gushing out words as commentators, right? Rather than as players, right? We see this during NFL season all the time, right? Us armchair quarterbacks, like, how dumb is he to throw that ball? Like, if you were out there, you would have done better? I don't know anything. That coach is a... Mocker. You, can, you tell me what it's like if you're sitting there actually with a helmet on your head with a 325-pound muscle machine running after you. Tell me how good you'll do. Tell me the choice then, right? We have whole industries of commentators, right? They delight in being the critic and casting stones at others, but never picking up the stones to help them build. By pulling others down. And you can know this in your family. You knew this during your high school years. You know this in your workplace. People who love to pull other people down. Why? Because if they pull you down, they look better themselves, right? Always pointing out how you could have done more, been smarter, stronger, better. (laughs) Never trying to help, but always pulling down. Mockers. How long will you mockers delight in mockery? This is foolish. And you fools hate knowledge. And fools here does not mean someone who lacks mental ability, but rather someone who lacks moral humility. Moral humility. These are people who think they're proud, right? The fool is not a good-hearted person who fails to grasp God's will with his head, but a rebellious person who knows God's will but chooses to go their own way. This is not choices made because of ignorance, but of willfulness. Grew up in the family of faith, but decided, "Ah, my way is just a little better than that. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. I think I know better. They don't want to see the truth. They already already know the truth in their hearts, but they'd rather have it hidden out of sight so they don't need to deal with it. And to these people, and at times to our own hearts, right? simple, loving simplicity, Mocking, delighting in mockery. Fools embracing foolishness. And wisdom calls out, how long are you going to do this? How long are you going to do this? Which gives us hope that we can turn. And this is the turning point, verse 23. Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teaching. Repent of what? Well, repent of loving simplicity. 
delighting in mockery, hating God's knowledge. And I've heard of many people repent, and I've repented of many things. I've never repented of this. I probably should, right? Am I delighting in mockery? Ooh. Am I hating God's knowledge? When I go my own way, I am. The call is repent of these things. If we do, then I'll pour out my thoughts on you. I'll make known to you my teaching. By the way, you know what repentance is? Going this way. Here's a repentance point. Going this way. What did I just do, do there? You turned around. Guess what that is, biblically speaking? Repentance. Being sorry for something is different than repenting from something. Being sorry often says, I'm sorry I did that. Sorry I did that. I'm sorry I did that. A lot of us just choose to be sorry for what took place, but we've never repented and changed our way. Repentance says what I've done is wrong, they take responsibility, it's hurt you, it's hurt others, it has hurt God. I repent, I take responsibility, I ask for mercy, I look to make it right, and I choose to walk a different way. That's the invitation. Repent. But he continues on. Wisdom continues to tell us. But since you refuse to listen when I call, and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hands, since you disregard all my advice, and do not accept my rebuke, I'll turn and will laugh when disaster strikes you. (laughs) What? I will mock when calamity overtakes you, when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you. He calls, he calls, he calls. God's word is listen and live versus live and learn. It's listen and live. And if you say, I don't want to listen, I don't want to hear you, God, I cannot hear you. When disaster, when overwhelmingness, is that a word, of being overwhelmed, comes, that's all you, friend. (laughs) Yeah, at that point, then they will call to me, not going to answer. They will look for me, not going to find me. Since they hated knowledge, it did not choose the fear of the Lord. There's that phrase again. That they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke. They will eat their fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. This is general principles. You reap what you sow. If you plant turnips, don't expect grapes. If you plant anger, don't expect peace. If you plant love, don't ex- or you, if you plant lust, don't expect love. Galatians 6. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. A woman reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature, he will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. I like this proverb, Proverb 16, excuse me, 19.3. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness, and they are angry at the Lord. Why did God Do this to me. Newsflash, you did it to yourself. Well, I'm so angry at God. Didn't God warn you like a thousand times? Well, it's still his fault. Really? 
People ruin their lives by their own foolishness, and they are angry at the Lord. (laughs) You have real choices with real benefits and real consequences. Some of God's gifts to us is to give us freedom, give us opportunity, give us choices, and he calls out to us, and we have a choice to make. And from those choices, we will reap. Okay? Granted, other people do things to us. Okay? Granted, sometimes there are exceptions to the rules. We talked about Ecclesiastes. We talked about Joe's granted. But generally speaking, this is how it works. And this is the summation of this whole section. Okay? Proverbs 1, 32, 33. You can circle this. For the waywardness, going from God's path of the simple, those refuse him, will ultimately destroy them, kill them. Taking steps out of God's good path. And the complacency, do you like that? The complacency of fools. I know about God's word, but I'll get to it later. And then decades of time is wasted and lost. And often people never return back. Haven't you heard that? Oh, I'll follow when. When will that be? I'm complacent. Verse 33, but whoever listens to me will live in safety. Be at ease without fear of harm. Now, is this a guarantee that everything in your life will be safe? Can we say that to those who are in Myanmar right now? Well, you know, if you were, if you were um, following God's wisdom, you'd be safe. Right? You know what this safety, you know what this ease is? You know what this without being afraid is? These are people who have nothing to hide. The, most, the people I know who are the most uneasy They're thinking about, I hope they don't check my phone. Hear me. They're at their house, and they know they have something hidden somewhere. And so they're they're with you, but they're thinking about, I hope they don't find out about. This is an easiness. This is an unafraidness. This is the confidence of those people who have nothing to hide. They're not looking over their shoulder in case someone walks in. They're not putting it underneath the seat for the parents not to hide, to find. This is an ease that comes with, i got nothing to hide. You can check anything at any time. You can track me to anywhere, at any place. You can check every drawer, every nook and cranny. i got nothing to hide. That's a good feeling. Right? So if you have things to hide... Give it away. If you've been enticed or baited, ask for help to remove the hook. If your heart has become hard, thinking your way is better than God's way, repent. Trust. And then there will be safety for you. There will be ease in your heart. You don't have to live in fear of harm. Coming in for a landing if the, the worship team can come, come back up. Okay. So here's the conclusion, okay? And let God speak to your heart, right? There could be just one thing, just, just one thing. Put it there, right? So if you're caught in unwise ways, if you've been baited and enticed by ill-gotten gain, if you're a hook and your life is being drained from you... <laughs> Heed the call of wisdom this day. Come clean. Repent. Turn to the path of God. Seek his way and his wisdom. Seek his faith. And his faith and his heart today. It's okay. And for those of you who do fear the Lord and have been seeking after him, have been giving yourself over to wisdom, continue to do so. 
God, I continue to give myself. God, see, look. Open my ears. Help me to listen. I commend you for this pathway. And so many of you are doing this. Keep becoming wiser. Keep seeking after. Keep learning and growing and becoming. Keep. Okay. So we're just going to take a moment. I want us just to focus in on God. You close your eyes if you... You're okay with that? So God, here we are together in this place, joined in various places, listening. God, I'm grateful for so many hearts in this place that are so attentive and hungry for your word. God, I know that pleases you. God, I ask that each one of us, Lord, will learn. Each one of us will listen. Each one of us will truly live. God, I'm praying for um, a few different categories of folks here. God, you are slow to anger. You are gracious. You are merciful. And God, because you are this way, we come to you. God, forgive us for not listening. God, forgive us for running. And I pray for those who are running today. The running in the pathway have been influenced and they've run away from you. God, we ask for mercy, God, for sons and daughters and grandchildren and spouses neighbors. God, we ask for mercy. Bring them back by your mercy this day, like the prodigal that have come to their senses and return because they know the heart of the Father. Help us to think, God, even now. <laughs> Where are things in our life that we've gotten by ill-gotten means, by deception, trickery, Things we stashed away just for us. Things that we think have given us life, but actually take it. They've captured our heart, and we don't even know it. Or we know it, but we don't know how to get out. Help today, God. God, we thank you that your wisdom calls out to us. From your word, from your people, by your spirit. I ask that we would listen and live. So help us to turn up what you're saying. God, help us to ignore, turn down, or walk away from other voices who sound so pleasant and good, but lead us away from you. Thank you for your calling to us. You are indeed a good, good Father. Help us to walk in your way according to your word. Thank you for your guiding to us. Thank you for your mercy to us. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.